Are you guys nervous Falling? as well? Mm-hmm. What? Are you guys really nervous as well? If, if I say yes, let him help you? <laughs> yeah. Are we nervous? I, we, I, uh, I'm in shock. Hey everybody, it's Jason Ellis and Tony Hawk, Hawk vs. Wolf, greatest podcast of all time in the history of the universe. What, what he said about our podcast, uh, and we have decks that are of the podcast. Signed by the greatest skateboarder <laughs> of all time in the history of the universe, and me. Dang, I was going to get that away with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the same graphic that we used before, but with gold background, special so it's edition. Better. It's like my teeth, but better. It's number one. The and same. the diptych, which is uh, two decks. Go side by side, signed by each of us, right there. Black with silver. I love this board so much. Tim Baring art on both of these. Shout out to Tim. And get yourself one of these bad boys. Gold plated, Hawk versus Wolf, signed deck. And black and silver, diptych, available now. Get one today. Uh, you can get it at TonyHawk.com and in the shop, right there. There's a little menu, upper right, shop, see both of these. Click add to cart, and we hope you give it to someone that has liked and described already. Yeah. Make sure you do that if you haven't. Thank you. Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs real protein punch? Don't, don't punch me. I would never Because I'm that. holding pistachios in my hand. Wait a minute. they'll fall on the floor. You got to crack into a good source of protein with tasty, healthy, wonderful pistachios. Ow. Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value, man. Pistachios are known for their protein power, fiber, better for you, unsaturated fats for a combination that will help keep you feeling fuller longer. Check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. Okay, uh, mm. Heath Kirchhardt is here. <laughs> he does, Heath Kirchhardt is here, is, is here reluctantly. I never. Let's just make a disclaimer. That was the greatest noise ever. We, we have ever captured for the a unicorn. Intro. He does not want to do interviews. Um, but I'm thankful for it. We're, we're, we're kind of trading favors, even though I would have done yours anyway, because <laughs> you're doing the thing on Klein. I know. <laughs> but let's just take it back. It's hard. It's hard when you ask someone and then they come right back like, "Oh yeah, but will you do this?" And to be like, "No, but welcome to podcasting, still do that. baby." Yeah. And this how you get, get everyone. You wait till they ask you to do <laughs> yes, something. Yes, very much uh, so. Yeah, is that why you business. do this? What's that? Is that why you do this? Yeah. I don't know why we do it. We do it because we enjoy it. Yeah. I was like, what? What do you mean? Yeah, no, we do, we do it. It's like, it, it, it's, not, it, it's not for profit yet, but nope. we love it. What it is day. fun. Heath. Yes. We go way, way back. We do. Um, let's take it back. I remember getting a Sponsor Me video on VHS. It said Heath Kirchhart. Uh, we had maybe exactly three sk- skaters on Birdhouse at the time. And um, the team manager, Tom Drake, uh, said, you got to check out this kid. And there was a video of you doing huge rails. And not just huge rails, huge slams. I mean, I think there's a, you break your wrist in the Sponsor Me video. I think Is that so, right? Yeah, yeah. You put it in there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, it was in the first Birdhouse video. Oh, oh, wait, your sponsor me video went into the just v- a lot of it, video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tony just basically took it and then chopped it up and put like a Nine Inch Nails song to it. But you were not sponsored and that good? Yes. Yes. I mean, this is the, the mid to early 90s, so you didn't have to be that. It, like, skating was pretty sloppy. When you sent the video, were you thinking, where do, where do they get a load of me? Or no. were you like, I really hoped that somebody would like maybe put me on flow? I just wanted some free boards. That's it. Yeah, I sent one to you, or to Birdhouse. I sent one to Blue, and I sent one to The Firm. And they were all kind of new. Company. They yeah. were all kind of new. Yeah. The Firm was under our, um, under our roof, too. Back then it was? It, right in the beginning, yeah. Okay. I, 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 you wouldn't, wouldn't have known that from the outside, but no. if you were a skate shop, you were buying The Firm from Blitz, which was... Our, our company. Okay. Um, but I just remember thinking, like, this, this kid's super gnarly and is only going to get gnarlier. And then we went skating 
Did we go to like a mani pad? Yeah, you came and picked me up <laughs> at my house. And then I drove, and then you're just like, where do you skate? And I'm like, I skate this manual pad in the back of a church. And then I'm skating behind a church at my ma- manual pad with, with Tony. <laughs> and it's super bizarre as a little kid. To, How old were you? 14. Wow. Yeah, and then just, it's, you know... You know, I've I had a lot of Tony Hawk boards. I was the Powell kid. Like ban this was like my video. Yeah. So it's it's super strange to all of a sudden be skating with the biggest name in skateboarding at so your at your local. It spot. was right after Feasters, right? Yeah, Feasters had come out probably. because I remember you telling me this one time, and I and I took it to heart. This is something like this was this was my. How do I explain it? This was like the validation I always wanted from Feasters. Because I knew, like, we made a video. It's, it, it was me just doing it on VHS decks. It's a mishmash of whatever, but I liked it. You know what I mean? And he told me one time, I said, well, what did you think of that video? And he goes, well, it was around the time that Questionable came out. And he's like, and that was the video, right? right. He goes, but, but your video was that if Questionable hadn't came out. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and and I, t- I was like, okay, I can live with that. Yeah. You know, our video was like a, <laughs> was a, was a, a cl- not a close second, but was a second. Yeah. And so I was like, it was a good video, but it was like, you know, the early 90s and there wasn't a lot out there. And yeah. Did you have more of a, this is also like Willie at his prime and Jeremy yeah, okay. like at his prime still. Did you have more of an old school style <laughs> when you start? Like, were you always capable of doing newer stuff when you first? Because you came from a, the, like the, the the influences that you're mentioning are are pretty old, and there there wasn't like a lot of as far as like band this and stuff. Yeah, band this isn't old. I mean, what what was that? Uh, Ninety eighty nine. Oh okay, stuff like that. That's probably when I started skating. But what kind of tricks were you? But you, you were leaning more. You were all street. I was I, well, yeah, from the get go. Yeah, I had a mini ramp, but like like an eight foot mini ramp, like one that went just to vert yeah. as a kid in my backyard. How long did you ride that for? Uh, I was probably back there for like a year or something. And then the streets. And then the streets just kind of. I mean, that's just the movement of skating at that yeah. time was like vert was was dying, guys. Well, and there oh, were yeah, no, no, there was no there. parks <laughs> and, and no parks at all. <laughs> and so and yeah, so I just basically transitioned into uh, street skating. And that's what everyone was doing, you know. Right. I lived up in like the hills, and no one wanted to come to the hills. So, did it come natural to you? Obviously, I feel. What's that? The street, like when you left the mini ramp and started skating the streets, like. No, nothing about skating is natural. I don't feel. Eh? Nothing about skating is natural. You look like it's natural. <laughs> Have you seen a part of me? Have I seen a what? A part. Yeah. You look like you're Which one part? of those. You look like you're one of the, <laughs> one of the lucky ones. Is what I call it. Okay, I'll take it. You do have you do have a look of comfort. Yeah, and, like you're relaxed. I am even not. landing huge stuff. You just look like yeah, yeah. That's, that's all. Cool. I don't think so. I mean, there's like a guy Mariano or someone that's like a natural talent. You know, those. <laughs> I'm I'm not. A I don't know. I think, but well, but I also noticed early on too was like if you're not looking like that on the landing, you're destroying yourself, and you were not afraid to get seriously hurt. Yeah, I mean, I think every skater's that way. Not everyone is that like on that level. You're still this way, right? Like yeah, you just I, broke okay, your leg. Sure. Like, <laughs> but I, I'm, I mean, not I'm this trying way to tone anymore. it down. And Was I that... listened to you. You did the 540. Like, there's a lot of risk in that these days. Yep. Yeah, so, like, we'll everyone issues. that's a skater is inherently going to take on this like element of. I, yeah, but they're not lip sliding El Toro before anyone else. Like, it's it's kind of a different thing. Of of the, the, the I'm just talking about you your broke risk, your leg. Your risk factor. Had, like, 50. I'm talking. No, <laughs> it's not me. I'm talking about 50. You're you're generalizing skateboarders. Was what I'm saying, and I'm saying that you're an exception in that you will take these huge risks, and also you'll conquer them as well. Sometimes. Um, let, I, okay, let me give you an example. When they started hook up shoes, they got a sample pair that were not of the quality you'd want to sell. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They were falling apart. Yeah. And they needed an ad. For the shoes, this guy does a lip slide to frontside shove it. What lip slide, and then shove it out. Oh, okay. On, I don't know. How do you like remember a, this stuff, dude? Because it's seared <laughs> in my brain. 
because I'm a fan. So he does that on this, this whatever, I don't know, like a 10 stair rail or something? Maybe more, bigger, more, yeah, <laughs> something, something huge. Yeah. And the shoes are falling apart. Like the, he can't even, he doesn't even get a few tries before they're gonna. Wait, the shoes broke? They were samples. On the, but the day that you did the yes. rail, the shoes broke in that yes. session. Yes, yeah. Wow, this is and then and then he shoes. like then he gets that sequence and it's like okay we got an ad, yeah. For when we do, do you remember get good that? Because it looks like you don't. I don't. That's where like Tony's not even there and he remembers this story. Yet I, I'm I lived it. I don't remember it at all. Did you hit your head a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. There's no memory up here. Yeah. What is and the, then everything from the past just doesn't even seem like me anymore. Like sitting here with you, it just seems bizarre for me. Because I don't do anything these days, you know? Because you don't. And here I am, like, and there's a bunch of cameras. Yeah. It's microphones. Well, you are doing things. I mean, you, you were producing uh, Well, I do later. stuff, but nothing that I should be here talking where anyone should care to but listen But you have a it. legacy in skateboarding. I, I, I don't know, think... The legacy, I don't, I don't like, when you, look yeah, at, I, when you look at, like, your days at Powell, or when you were a pro skater, Jason... No, no don't, yeah, say yeah, yeah. don't say word. Don't, don't say word. Don't say the W word. Okay. But like it's it's it's, oh it's like God. it's like someone else, right? It doesn't even seem like you, or is that just me? Might that's just me. Uh, yeah, I, I I get that. Like that's I like mean, a whole different person, a whole other yeah. lifetime ago. It's, yeah. a it's lifetime like childhood. Ago. Yes, it's like sure. childhood. Looking at childhood, like yeah, that was me doing it. But like I don't associate myself with that little kid, and like identify like there's not many traits that have kind of yeah. Do you still I see yourself that. as a skateboarder? Well, I'm, I still skateboard. Right. So, but like, cause I, you know, I mean, I get into radio, I got into fighting, I'm doing comedy. Like, what are you, Jason? You got into fighting too? Yeah, I'm undefeated, two and zero. Oh. Okay. I got out <laughs> just in time before I got beat senseless. Like the cage stuff. Yeah, okay, and I had yeah. a couple of boxing fights as well. I got into it. I still train, but I'm not supposed to get punched in the head anymore. I got friends that care about me that were like, maybe stop getting punched in the head, so I don't do that. Yeah, but I still train all the time. I can barely walk right now because I did a class two days ago that I am not ready for, and now my calves don't work because I'm 52 and I jumped into a class that you need conditioning for that. Mm. But that's that's me. I always do stupid stuff like that. I'm very proud of it. Okay. But I always refer to myself as a skateboarder, and I'm I was a pro skateboarder. I'm definitely not anymore. But I still, I don't think I can let it go. Like I don't. But no. okay, so that's the difference. Is that I saw Heath. I mean, you you basically said this is my last video. As I, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it seemed like you were like, uh, this is my last video, and this is the end of my professional skateboarding career. Yeah. You you definitely made that. You, I don't know if you made it an official announcement, but you kind of intimated that. Yeah. And then once that was gone, you're like, I'm not a pro skater anymore. But See, I, still skate. I find that. But yeah, and I still skated hard after it too. Right. And I, then yeah. only recently have I kind of just been like, this is just going to be for fun. And is that from injuries, getting older, or what made you decide that? Just getting older and like, I don't want to get hurt anymore. Yeah. Like, like I don't want to hit my head. I don't want to break any more bones. Yeah, it's totally fair. And, uh, you know, it's just a desire. I mean, like, obviously, if you're still breaking bones or putting yourself in a position to, you know, really hurt yourself, there's still like a drive and a fire to do that. Yeah. Or like, I don't have that for skateboarding. Right. I mean, I lost it as well. You know, like I, I spent, I did like two decades where I was in radio and living in Los Angeles and not really thinking about skateboarding too much. As a matter of fact, I think for the first decade, I tried to run from it because seeing everybody else still going kind of burnt me a little bit because I, I wanted to keep going, but my body was kind of making it a hell. Like every time I'd go, I'd just be so wrecked that. I would go home and be like, what are you doing? Like, you can barely walk, and it wasn't even that big of a slam. But then I took a big gap and came back, and it was like a, <clears throat> a big, it was like a refreshing, like, oh, my God, these are all my, these are my people. Like, well, how, did I, how did I ever leave this? And, you know, I talked to maybe a handful of guys that were my friends still, like Colin McKay, be like, hey, man, how you going? I'm good, how you going? But that's it. Yeah. And then coming back sort of, seeing all these new people that I'd never heard of that were so full of life and so excited to be there. And then this old bastard just killing. I was like, wait, you, you can still go. Like, you can still do this and, 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 and take my ego out of it because it's gone now. I don't, no, I don't care what you expect from me. I, I yeah. only care what I have. So 
am I as good? No, nowhere near it. Like everything I do now is very difficult and it's nowhere near as good as what it used to be, but I've accepted it and I'm now I'm just happy to be there. Like I'm like, I'm still here. Am I as good? No, we're near it. But I think I'm happier doing it now because I don't, I'm not trying to impress you. I don't, if you don't like it, that's fine. Like, I'm not that big of a fan of it either. But am I having fun with my friends that we grew up together skating and now we're back and we're like old and wrinkly and our kids have beards? Like, this is, this is crazy that we're doing this. I love it. Yeah. But you're still out there just cr- having fun skating. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I still like try to go film here and there. It's just not going to be anything that's going to, Seriously hurt me. Right, but you steered yourself in another direction where it sounds like, you know, you went out there and really experienced life more so than the average bear after retiring from skateboarding. You really went out there and lived. I don't know. I don't leave the house for a week here and there, so. That can happen too, <laughs> but don't you, like, do a lot but of... But I, I think it's commendable that you that you you did it on your own terms and you, you made a distinct separation in terms of your career because... I, me, yeah, I'm still doing it, sure, but there's a there's something you've said about stubborn pride, where I'm just more yeah, like you're also I just, sick with skating. Like you should not be skating at your level. Like there's certain skaters, like Guy Mariano is kind of sick with skating. Like he is still skating at such a high level at such an old age, older age. <laughs> and Lance is sick with it, where it's just like yeah, true. You don't like that's all you know to do, and that's all like that you're like compelled to do. Like when you skate, you're still like trying to. Do new but stuff, did you right? ever imagine, like, when, let's say, when you were in whatever your prime, you consider your prime, where you're like, oh, I'm going to keep running this for the next 10, 20 years? Or did you always know, like, I, there's, there's an end that I see? I always wanted it to end. Yeah. I didn't want to be the person where, like, when I get up, it's just like really crickety. I wanted to be yeah, able to, sucks. like, still move and, and st- you know, I don't know if I actually, like, Accomplish that, like a neck hurts and sleeping, right? Do you guys Same. have problems mm-hmm. sleeping? Yep. I'm going to get stuck like for my neck. I did not want that. to like live the rest of my life like this. I thought I got out early enough, but I, I didn't. What was the worst injury? I mean, probably all the head hits. I mean, who knows what sort of brain damage you have from hitting your head like this? I mean, you guys have both hit your head a lot too. And I remember I dated this therapist, and she's like, You definitely have brain damage. So hot. <laughs> Wait, but did you... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> did they say that because because that of what you were doing or just because, like, oh, well, you definitely have a because of your history or, or like... Just oh, from wait. hitting your head, like, No, but concrete. I'm saying not because of the way you were acting. Yeah. Oh. Is it the stories of the slams or the way that you were acting? <laughs> That's... I, I didn't know. I didn't clarify. <laughs> I hadn't considered that. <laughs> Man... I don't know. Ooh. She was dating me. Yeah, but that, like I said, did you not hear my immediate reaction? Like, I, <laughs> if you were a cute girl that said that, I'd be like, "Ooh, that's cute." Uh, I like damage. <clears throat> I was gonna say, yeah, yours is on the, the other the other scale. Yeah, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> um, but they can't test for that, right? Like they, you gotta die. You first. can test. You can test oh. for um, a certain gene that makes you more susceptible. And it's the one that it's the Alzheimer's it. gene, is it? Yeah. Yeah, because I got that on both sides. You got Alzheimer's? On uh, both sides I, of my family. Mm. And I've hit my head a lot, so like, how fucked am I, Tony? They do laser stuff. I can't answer that. My mom had Alzheimer's. <laughs> I got... But hey, I'm 55. You got a few more good years. Who are you? Hey, who are you? What? Who are you? I'm, I'm me. Yeah, but what's because your name? Because I'm me. What's Anthony, your name? Anthony Frank Hawk. See? Still it's got fine. It. We're fine. I know a guy, I fight a guy that got knocked out like way too many times and still is in the UFC and gets punched in the face. And he had laser, lasers break down something in his brain. What? Yeah. And Did he, this work? He, de- he's still fighting. He knows his name. He probably shouldn't. But I would say after the lasers, I would call it a day. But he got the lasers and then excelled and became the champion of the world after the fact. Yeah, there's not a lot of critical thought in fighting, right? You're Cody, just kind of going off Cody's instincts. Hey, man. There's right, a, you're going off instincts. And training is what like comes out, not yeah, critical but, thought in the ring. No, that's not true. Ska- it's, fighting is just like skateboarding. Is there people out there that are mindless, violent people that just come forward and, and try to kill? Yes, that's probably a lot of them. But the real good guys, they think, and they think quick. And they make decisions where they trap you. It's a chess match when you get really good, and people, you, they make you play into this thing where they get you 
because they're way ahead of you. They know where you're going. They'll fake to see what you're... Like, if you fake and see what he does, you know the next time you fake, he's going to have that reaction. You step to the other side and you hit him. Like, And the good guys pick people apart where I'm like, this guy is not angry and just throwing blows. He is, he is scientifically breaking you down and he's a very smart person. And also there's a lot of interviews with people where not everybody, obviously, because being a pro fighter is kind of a dumb idea. But there are there are guys that are very intelligent and 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 retire at a at a better like there's a lot of guys they can't give it up, and, and it's different. Like if you hit your body, you, you're going to be sore. You hit your head a lot. Like there's a certain time where it's like you got to let it go. If you got family, like yeah. you got to let it go so that you can stay around for them afterwards. And and it's not it's not just one or two. There's a lot of people there that are like, okay, I've had my run. Like I can tell I'm a little bit slower and it's getting dangerous. So I'm stepping out. There's some thinkers in that game. It's not all mindless meatheads, <laughs> okay. believe it yeah, or not. so there. I didn't realize I was on a UFC podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of my MMA talk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my MMA TED Talk. <laughs> did you ever do any, did you ever do actual training? Like working out? Are we on fighting or skating? No, skating. Um, did you do anything besides skating to... Stay in shape or to yeah, yeah. keep I ride an exercise bike. And like, I got but to the problem with the knees. While you were skating. While skating. I got to the, problem, to the point with the knees where getting MRIs, inconclusive, you know, steroid shots, or at least just one. And then I just rode a bike religiously from there on out and it just all kind of went away. Huh. And to this day, I still ride an exercise bike. But you were, you were actually, were you, do I have this wrong? Were you doing deliveries on a bike for a while? On a motorcycle, like a little motorbike. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. Salmon to go. For Salmon to go. Yeah. yeah. The parade isn't the only thing going down in Pasadena. Tradition meets college football action in one epic bowl game. And with DraftKings Sportsbook, you can make every play count. Everybody knows college football is more exciting when there is something on the line and customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets just for betting $5 in college football. Watching the Rose Bowl is fun, but turning $5 into 150 is even more fun. The Rose Bowl is on January 1st, 2024. You get the DraftKings Sportsbook to make your bets. Michigan plays Alabama in the first round of the college football playoffs. The Wolverines are currently a negative 122 favorite, and the Crimson Tide is a plus 102 slight underdog. Think the score will be over or under 45? You can bet that too. Will Saban upset Harbo? Make your picks at DraftKings Sportsbook now. Download the app now and use the code HVW. New customers can score 150 instantly in bonus Bets for betting five bucks on college football. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code HVW. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY for 67369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Give AG1 a try if you're taking supplements and want a single solution that supports your entire body and nutrition bases. If you want better gut health, a boost in energy and immune system support, AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body, universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. AG1 ingredients contains prebiotics, probiotics, and digestive enzymes for your gut support. Magnesium and B vitamins for energy support adoptogens to balance your body's stress levels and vitamin C and zinc to help support your immune health. AG1 has a team of doctors and scientists. It's tested for 950 contaminants, NSF certified for sport. It's formulated based on the latest science 
and maintains high quality standards. AG1 is a supplement that provides support a body needs daily. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash HVW. That's drinkag1.com slash HVW. Check it out. You have been a Renaissance man in a lot of ways. I'm, I'm so curious about that. And then like you a were... blue collared one. <laughs> yeah. But was that more just to see if you can make it through? Were you actually doing that for a living? I mean, when you're a pro skater, this is not a lot to do. I understand that. But, and I'm single. I don't have kids. There's a lot of time. And so, okay. Like, so I'm, so but I'm saying, if you, I deliver pizza one day a week, that's like exciting to like go to a restaurant, which I've never worked in, and to like sit with the people that are making the pizzas. And every once in a while, I'll try to make a pizza, and then when delivery comes in, whip around downtown LA on a motorbike. Or being a bartender. Being a bartender is another thing. Like, I don't know if you're yep. single. Being a bartender sounded like a good gig, and you're like when you're 35. Wait, were you a bartender just so you could slay? Well, no, I, it was also like a bar I was invested in. Yeah, yeah, the, the oh, bar. So it was a business the, the Atiba, thing. But, but I, Can you make drinks? Atiba's not, no, 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 Atiba's well. not behind the bar mixing drinks. Okay. You know what I mean? But he there. was. He was. Like, I, I, I definitely ordered drinks from Heath when I went there. So you, you liked doing that, right? Did I charge you? I don't know. Oh. Did I tip you? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Right. It was probably a free event, probably. It was probably something like open. Probably not. It was probably open. I love how he just throws it out there so confidently. No. Nah. But what made you want to do that? Uh, invest in the bars? No, the, the making of the drinks and stuff. Oh, I, well, I, I put like a chunk of money in this thing, and I was like, I want to work it, and I just kind of want to see how, it, how the whole operation runs, and you kind of got to be there doing it to see how it runs. It seems like you, you don't have to be, but I think it's cool that you did to that. To see how it runs, you do. Yeah, I mean, you that's, that's what Riley, Riley started a coffee shop dirty. and learned everything about being a barista and, and doing, you know, doing orders and, and getting beans and whatever else. And he's yeah. like, I could work at any coffee shop now. Yeah, and, and you have to be in it to like know it. Like He knows right. how a coffee Wait. shop runs inside right. and out right. only from being there and doing it. He knows what it's like to be the employee. So you only did that just so you could be a better businessman? It was a, it was a bunch of things. Because it seems like with the pizza thing and the drink thing, like you really want to dive in and kind of experience all the like the people's attitudes in the game. Like, how does it all work, and why does it? Like, you seem like you have a lot of appreciation for things that being a pro skateboarder and living that life, and then wanting to deliver some a pizza. It's it's that I, I wouldn't have caught that when I was younger. I'd be like, like, someone's like, if I had the money and I bought into it, and it's like, why don't you really experience it? I'd be like, no, I'd rather just give you the money and then <laughs> yeah. you tell me how much money we made. Like, it's yeah. a different kind of It's also thought. easy when you get to like, I want to work today. And yeah. then I don't want to work for a month. And then I want to work for two days. So okay. it's a lot easier when you're not like... Yeah, you, yeah, you have the, you know, the option. Yeah. Yeah, I feel... Like other people in your in your position, or or for whatever reason, would do that kind of thing. We're delivering pizzas. Where it's more like, check me out. Like I'm I'm doing the thing, and you were just you truly wanted to experience it. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's super cool. Yeah. What about your your boating adventures? Yeah, how's that? I don't. Yeah, I don't know. They the last one didn't go as well. What happened? But what the last inspires one? that? I don't know. Because that seems like something that you definitely know is going to be torturous. Yeah, I mean, there's certain there's a cer- there's a certain amount of like torture that's good in life for like memories and, and remembering it. I mean, it builds uh, character. Like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but you're putting yourself at, at actual risk. But if any trick, um, I'll relate to the skating. If any trick was really easy, true, it doesn't have this like feeling of this real feeling of accomplishment or mm-hmm. like you went through something and, and accomplished something, some mission that's been completed. Right. Um, and so, yeah, when you're on these trips and it's kind of miserable, those are kind of like the trips you look back on and are just kind of like, that was a great trip. Yeah, Can but you're, you- you're purposely setting up miserable trips. But there's, a, there's as much misery in it as there is like, like awe and like, okay. you know, to put yourself out in the middle of nowhere is like, you know, it's... What are you doing on the boat exactly? I've had a few boat trips. I've had like three. How long I, 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 know, I just know uh, mostly about the the one, one that, that went, went wrong. South, yeah, yeah. I How? got I got rescued off the the coast of Baja in like a rowboat. It, you were in a rowboat. Yeah, 
It was like a little, I built this boat with a friend. We tried to, the goal was to row down to the bottom of the peninsula. Uh, Tip of Baja. Do you have a big background in rowboats? No. I don't think I've ever said that. We didn't know how to row until we actually put the, the, the boat in the water. And we didn't know how the boat would sit. And we built this thing. And it was, a, it was not an ocean boat. It was a yeah. kit from like a lake company. And uh, it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't last long. It didn't go well. See any sharks? No, well, no. No sharks. Sorry, I got a weird thing about those guys. Yeah. You know, but isn't you, there a saying, like, you haven't seen a shark, but a shark has seen you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I've but, served. I mean, at some point you thought, like, this is, this is the end, right? Yeah, I mean, when we were in the water swimming in, and we're just off the coast of... Wait, swimming, so the boat broke? The boat sank. Okay, and how far out? Like, uh, there was a, there's a thing, there's a, like, a, a weather, the Santa Ana winds here in Southern California, which is like an offshore wind that's blowing, you know, you out. Yeah. And so we basically got caught in this Santa Ana wind. It was super rough. The boat took on a bunch of water, and then just slowly just sat just kind of at the surface of the water. Hey. And all our stuff started floating away. And so we grabbed our life jackets. We had a surfboard. We had swim fins. We had like a bunch of like equipment to like okay. survive. And we were swimming in, and it's just like a river on the top of the ocean kind of like heading out. So we're swimming for like 45 minutes, and we just look back, and we've just made zero progress. So and like, you're getting tired. And, yeah, like, I'm swimming with swim fins. We basically came up with this system where I was underneath the surfboard hold, holding onto it, kicking with my legs while Dude. he's on top paddling oh, was ugh. our system so that we would stay together because the, the, the water was super rough. And then, uh, and we're, by, we're uh, like, 50 kilometers into Mexico, and there's, like, it's kind of like a desolate part of, like, the coast where there's just houses but not really any big town. And then randomly some house saw us struggling, saw the boat, Saw us swimming in and called this lifeguard, and he came out on a jet ski and just, you know, what's going through my head was just like, I can't believe I'm going to fucking die out here. Like, I'm right. eventually I'm going to seize up. Like, my muscles are already getting tired. Yes, yeah. swimming with swim fins and the leverage. And you kinda. couldn't call for help. So, as far as you're concerned, nobody's seeing you. No, I mean, we knew we were on our own. Yeah. Was it getting dark? No, it was like in the morning. We'd sail through yeah. the night because we couldn't come in because the so water no was sleep. too big. It's amazing anyone saw, I mean, you were pretty, if you're that far Very out. lucky for someone to see us, very lucky for that guy to come because we basically, like in your head, you're just kind of like, I'm going to end up just grabbing the surfboard, floating out and getting hypothermia and dying. Wow. And then so that's just, what I meant by putting himself in great peril for an adventure. Yeah. When you look back on that, how do you feel about it? I mean, it was a pretty, it was a stupid trip to do, to undertake. But... I'm not scolding you, I'm just curious. I, I know, I mean, I've read people, people have told me, like, yeah, Darwin Award, all this stuff, and just, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Did you learn anything from uh, it? Yeah, don't fuck with the ocean. Right, that's a good lesson. <laughs> I don't fuck with the ocean. <laughs> Did Would you ever surf? I try here and there, but I'm terrible. But yeah. I still try all the time. Didn't we go snowboarding? Did we? I, don't I feel like any. we went snowboarding with ocean. I don't think I've spent much time with ocean. I don't think I was on that one. Huh. I don't know if I've ever. I know I taught ocean, ocean how to snowboard. I remember. Oh, it was Andrew. I took Andrew snowboarding. <laughs> you like the story when he was when he was a kid, very feisty, and it was almost like he felt like it was this field trip that we had to go on. So I was, let's go snowboarding. All right, let's go snowboarding. You know, and then and then like we spent most of the day. I, I showed him how to make turns and whatever. And then he finally made it down the mountain without falling. He's like, "All right, I did it. I'm going to the car." Yeah. And then he sat in the car he just for the rest of the day. Was that? He just wanted to skate. Just wanted to skate. And also was just more annoyed, like, yeah, okay, I conquered that. Like, can we, can we leave now? Yeah. <laughs> and me and Ocean are like, no, we're still we're here for, until it gets dark. I'm trying to think of what, we, we had a couple funny tours, for sure. Were those your first skate tours, the Birdhouse ones? I can't remember. I don't know if I actually went on tour with you when I was a little, little kid. No, I think you were in your late teens, maybe. Yeah. That's when we took the, the Jones Soto. There was a Jones RV. Soto one, yeah. I just saw yeah. a tape. I went, well, whatever, not interesting. Jones Soto. I have, I have these pictures. I mean, that was when I got one of the first digital cameras, or I had a digital camera, then no one had one. And it was so hard to get skate photos because the, <laughs> the shutter speed was so slow. But I have these photos of you at these demos with tens of people watching. Yeah. And you're doing these huge kickflips and rails and stuff. It's, it was just such a strange time. Yeah. 
I, I was, we are doing a new episode, and so I went through, he sent me all this archival footage, and one of it's a birdhouse demo. Really? Where, yeah. That he was at? Or that he was at. Watching? He or was watching, he yeah. He was skating? I mean, he would have been a little kid. Okay. This is like mid-90s. And uh, yeah, I was skating, and it's you skating the mini, this mini ramp. Like it's a vert ramp, you know, like doing. <laughs> yeah, that's all I had. <laughs> doing like 360 varials and just like, like you can't get the air, but you're just <laughs> yeah. doing it. I never understood how he did that. <laughs> it's just, he's doing a vert demo on like a six foot ramp. Like as a I vert. had to do that. It's because I had to do it on the, that PAL mini ramp that they made. Okay. And we, we rode that for, you know, two to three months at a time. Yeah. I was the next day. generation of that PAL mini ramp where it was like, Mike V and all us losers, and every now and then someone would yell 540, and I'd be like, listen, asshole, there's only one person in the world that does 540s on this freaking mini ramp, and it ain't me. Uh-huh. But I just remember always thinking that it's all his fault that somebody yells that out when you're on a mini <laughs> no, ramp. No, it's Mike McGill's fault. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, but he always made that easy. And hand plants. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you can get upside down and stand on your just hand. Just because all the with no bowls vert. we skated were so small that you yeah. just you could just kind of snap. Yeah, because it was. You could, I remember doing a a little mini ramp demo in Torquay, and Christian Hassoy was doing like six foot lean airs well, on Christian, a mini Christian ramp, and I was up, like, hell. He grew up skating the brown balls. The brown balls were like these four or five foot bowls. No vert. All, not vert, but but then he was he would blast on. That was the first photo he ever got in the magazine. It was a huge front side ollie yeah. in the brown ball. Yeah. And we thought he was a girl. Hmm. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I can see that. Um, but uh, I, I always appreciated that you, even though it was chaos and we were just on the road and it, there were no, you know, there wasn't great expectation, but you always, you always performed. Like you always were like, oh yeah, we got a crowd, we got to skate. Well, that's because you're there and you're kind of sure, setting, but you're I, setting the precedent of kind of like, this is what it's like to be a pro skater. Like this is what... I. The but boss I, can't be out there sweating his balls off in a fucking warehouse in Oklahoma. <laughs> okay, fair enough. While an 18-year-old kid is like But not everyone, else was, not everyone else was on board. That's all I'm saying. There were plenty of times when other skaters who shall remain unnamed were like, nah. <laughs> who are you talking about, Greco? <laughs> <laughs> well, I only say Greco because he's in this tape and he's skating in it. But like, I, maybe he didn't skate all the demos. Was it Greco who you're talking about? Uh, at, well, at one point it was yeah, him. Yeah, you're the first yeah. person to ever name stuff. This is yeah. excellent. I think Jim's, point, Jim's for not sure going to care. Was, was him, but others too, like where they just don't want to. Andrew always skaters. skated. Yeah. So who are the other names? <laughs> I know I would have probably been one of them. What's that? I probably would have been one of them. No, you always skated. Huh. Because we were always out doing street missions too, and you were always up for that as well. Yeah. No, you you were you were one of the few. You and you and Andrew were like so were everyone else skating. Skate. Willie Willie skates. Mm-hmm. Willie skate. Willie went through a went through a phase where he wasn't hmm. skating, and it was like, who are we talking then? Klein? I mean, how many more people we got? <laughs> yeah, get to the bottom of it. You two, come on. This is awesome. Do it, do it. I think it was Klein. I think you're right. <laughs> I'm just guessing. So we What's got that? Klein. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Sorry, I don't, I, don't, I don't like throwing people under the bus like uh, that. We, we made it through. It's like 30 years ago, and they don't care. Yeah, Tony, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. Who are these bastards? <laughs> no, that's all right. Okay. Dang it. <laughs> but I appreciate the, I I'm appreciate so that you. I'm so pissy you've got brain damage. Otherwise, you could just reel all those names out right now. <laughs> I can't even think he of knows. who else yeah. would have been he there. He knows. He knows. Um, but um, there was, there, there was always it. like, <laughs> it was, there was always... Uh, there was always one person that just made it tense on, on every, like, because we, you guys were coming in and out. You know what I mean? Especially on tour, uh-huh. right? You didn't go through the whole tour necessarily. But there was always, like, one person on the bus that was like, oh, like, it got rough. Mm. So, anyway. <laughs> I I, these stories are no good without the name. Thank you. Well, you know, you know Barra caused a lot of attention yeah. <laughs> okay. on, on that one tour. So we got Barra. You were you yeah. on that one? I don't think so. With Jeremy? No, the, I don't think I told bus, Jeremy. I mean, this is this isn't. They're, we're all friends now. Those guys hang out more than I hang out. Yeah. But at one point there was like this great divide in the in the van, the back and the front. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Jeremy and I are up front, you know, driving and DJing, and then Bear was in the very back, and he's like, the two shall not meet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It happened. They know it happened. It's all right. He's an emotional guy. 
So am I. I can relate to that. Um, so Bera was the one, huh? Yep. I have a funny no, story. No, not the one. I just like, one, of, one of the ones. Not the one. One of the. But ones. there was a point where he was definitely brought things to a very tense situation, and he knows that. It's fine. Emotion. <clears throat> I still have a photo of you. <laughs> I have a photo of all of us in the um, in the RV. Just. In the Jones one. I in think the that Jones might have been like the RV, only just, it's so dirty and so sweaty, and we're just like, yep, cool, like yeah. drinking soda, on to the next one. Drinking a lot of soda. <laughs> Those are great sodas. How did you, so it, it was interesting to me, given that you were so young when you got on the team, and, you know, Jeremy and I were kind of the, I don't know, figureheads of Birdhouse, so to speak, and then you ended up connecting with Jeremy more and then doing all the hookup stuff. And the end and, and everything else. Yeah. Do you remember how you guys first connected? Not really. I feel like he kind of like, I don't know, maybe that kind of courted me into writing for Birdhouse the second time. But then it was with Barra. So yeah, I don't know. That's kind of fuzzy. But I think when it, when it comes down to, you know, just my age at that time when I, I was 18 or something, mm. and I was like, you know, I was like a destructive kid, like like to whatever, cause havoc or whatnot. And then here was this other guy that was much older that liked to cause <laughs> that havoc. That had mastered the and art. Then, and then he had, like, the money to, like, uh, right. buy a van and trash it. And, like, the money to, like, ah, eh, fuck it, you know? Right. Doesn't matter. Like, I have money to fix it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Where, like, to me, I had to, like, work within the budget. But right. he was the first one that I kind of connected with that was just like, no. And plus he was older. He should have been the one saying no. Where right. I would just push it to try to get the no, and there was no... There, there was, was no limit. There was no... There was no, no limit, yeah. So... I mean, <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good analogy of the whole thing. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> I think he liked that dynamic between us, you know? Oh, absolutely, yeah, because you both, you both had crazy ideas, and you were both... You were both supported in it. Yeah, like, I had never met someone like that. I mean, I remember to this when day, he, there's no one like <clears throat> Jeremy. Like, I remember when he approached me about... Um, about you and Vera um, coming back so that we could, you know, make it a bigger thing and do the video. And I was like, "What was are... your honest reaction? What's that? What was your honest reaction to that? I didn't believe him. <laughs> I know, but did you want us to come <clears throat> of back? Course. Yeah, really? Yeah. I okay. mean, there was a part of me when when you left Birdhouse that I felt like, shit, am I just a springboard company? You know what I mean? Because because I, I knew your potential, and I was like, oh, I'm just like the the. I'm I'm the doorway to some bigger thing now. Farm team. Farm team, yeah. And I was just like, oh, like that's so but not you know what that's I imagined. Not how skating was, especially at that time. Of course it not, was simply but, just but like when, my friends ride for this. Absolutely. But 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 when you left, it, for me it was just more like, oh, that's what they think of of us and me. But yeah, yeah I, of course, you had all your homies wrote for foundation. Do you remember the Christmas, the Birdhouse Christmas uh, Christmas party where me and Bear confronted you? On who you don't like more. <laughs> I don't remember that. You don't remember this? So, like, me and Bear were having this conversation. I'm just like, he definitely hates you more. Like, this is me talking to Bear. Like, he definitely hates you more. <laughs> like, you were like a pain in the ass. You're older. I'm a 14 year old kid that quit his company. And he's like, no, he hates you more. And I go, let's go up and ask him. So, we went up, <laughs> we went up and There's I'm no like, way. I would have bet my like entire net worth <clears throat> that you would have said Bear. And you just looked and just go, you. And you pointed at me. I'm just like, me? And I go, I was 14. And you're like, yeah, but I did like all the heavy lifting. Like, I found you. <laughs> and I was just like, I was just dumbfounded, did not expect it. Uh, well, Steve was a much bigger headache. I in those appreciate days. the honesty in it. And I was, you know, <laughs> we're laughing, we're, dr we're drinking at a Christmas party and everything. But I was just like, there wasn't even like a hesitation. It wasn't even like, <laughs> And I know Bear was like a pain in the ass. Like, <laughs> oh I know Bear was a pain in the ass to have as a rider because, like, at one time, one time I went to Birdhouse and you were getting chewed out on the phone, and you get off and you're just like, "Oh, it's Bear." And Bear was chewing you out for putting all these kids, me, on the team. And so, I had yeah, a, I just figured you would pick Bear. Oh, it seems irony. like the no-brainer answer, but it was me without hesitation. Yeah, but I that but I you don't remember this. I, do, I barely. This I is also it. my memory, which is no. I, it, that probably happened. I mean, that definitely sounded like a, a thing that would have happened at a Christmas party yeah. for Birdhouse, which were just yeah. sloppy already. Um, but I think that that also speaks to 
how how much I thought of your potential and how like how much I believed in what you were capable of. This is the spin. When you're it's not, not around, a spin at all. when you're not around <laughs> and, you've ne- and you've never been around when I've been around him, he speaks really highly of you. I'm not making it up. Oh no, I like I We've talked about this. Oh, like for sure, but it, there's no way it's a spin. But it was, it was just more like, like, oh, like here's here's the, here's this guy that is is going to go on to be a great skateboarder, and he just kind of you know went off before before even realizing that kind of potential, and I was just like, oh, like there he goes, and um, and that was super hard for me to accept, and and. It's it's not it's not because but you also I didn't Andrew. like you. you also it, was more, it was more that I was I was I was frustrated, uh-huh. and it, that frustration at the time turned into anger. You know what I mean? And so even through those years, that's probably why I was like, yeah, I'm still mad at you. Yeah, um, I liked the like just real open, quick answer. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> but it never. I, I don't know. There's nothing. I don't think of, think back and go like I'm so thankful that it all transpired the way it did. I really am. Like the fact that that you went and did something and cultivated your style for the most part. You guys came back when when we were ready to really make a move mm-hmm. in 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 the form of the end. And then you and Jeremy went on to do the hookup stuff. Like I'm so thankful that that all happened and that I was part of it. So. In the end, it's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I know I was like twenty something. I barely paying my mortgage. I know. And like my, you know, my my great my great find of a skater left, and I was like, oh, yeah. So there, I there understand both positions. <laughs> so, you but it's not a spin. It I know, I know. But um, where'd you get such a great attitude about yourself? I'm being sarcastic. (laughs) On what? You just seem like you don't think you're that cool. It's like you don't remember, but I assume that I was probably a prick. But I don't feel like you kind of, you're like, ah, I wasn't that good, or or, I wasn't that, I didn't really work that hard. Like, but you did, your proof, it's on video. You're, um, uh, you're like one of the greats. And you're, you don't, you seem like you're. I don't know. I'm like, I'm a B level skater. See what I mean? No, no, that's, that's That's, honest. Like, I, I would never like head a company. Like there was, I was always like the the B roll. Yeah, yeah, that's just not true. Yeah, well, like I mean, I'm saying C is like an average professional skateboarder. And yeah. If you're gonna put it on like a real average level, like average is a great skateboarder. Yeah, that's what, that came out wrong. Yeah, a lot of a lot of other guys that are uh, after you speak about you like you were one of the best there was. They've been on this show saying it. I wasn't there. Name names. Andrew oh. Reynolds. <laughs> no, he didn't. He I listened think. to the Andrew Reynolds one. No, he said that to me. I mean, so many skaters have said that to me. Like Heath. And and also the the fact that you did you you were one of the few again that was like this is my this is this is the culmination of my efforts as a professional skateboarder and now I'm done with that. And I don't think anyone else had either the strength or the the foresight to do such a thing. To what? Stop Very skating? few people. To, to stop in a way that is, is more finite. I, I mean, I think that comes from watching like Matt Hensley do it. Like to me, Matt Hensley and that like retirement part was something that really like to this day is just like etched in me. Uh huh. As just kind of like a classy move. Uh, that's what I think. I think it's very classy. And so, I mean, whatever, this is, you know, my perception of skating has kind of changed. Um, and skateboarding's kind of changed what it is to be a professional skateboarder these days change and yeah you see you know Eric Costin or Jeff Rowley Andrew still skating and just you yeah. know putting out what they do like this what is just right. me skating and, and they have an outlet for it yeah yeah and it's yeah. and it's awesome to see that uh, how are you never ever on social media I hate social media what but what, what was the beginning of that I was on Instagram in like 2012 or whenever it first came out, and I thought it was like funny and all this. And then once it became this like at symbol, I don't know if it was like Twitter or what kind of ruined it, kind of like uh, made it what it is today. And then, I mean, I don't think I need to go on what's bad about social media. No, no, no. But I just like you were one of the first people that just wasn't there at all. Well, there's nothing to sell. 
like it's a photo app. I'm not a photographer, and if you if you have something to sell, I see why being on it. But if you have nothing to sell, it's simply just like ego or to feed like, your ego, right? Like there's no point in it, <laughs> right? Like oh, I it's, it's supposed to be this thing that like connects everyone, but it's just like the phone does that already. I can text people, right? Like, yeah, I don't. I I'm just surprised that it is so widespread. That like I mean, I'm sure every single person in this room has one. Like it's you know baffling that it's this popular. What is it like being out on the outside of that bubble? I don't know what it's like to be inside. <laughs> okay, good answer. I read reports and like everyone's <laughs> depressed and like thinks their life sucks. So it maybe it's better. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm envious. I will look at it. I will look at it, you know, and like I'll see like you know, someone like Atiba where you're just like, this is like this is a fucking excessive insane life. <laughs> yes. Um and I don't envy his life at all. It looks like a nightmare to me. <laughs> <laughs> like having to constantly like schmooze, but like that's Curate. what he does well. Curate. Yeah. Curate, yeah. And yeah. I mean he <laughs> His life's insane. <laughs> it is. You wanna go bowling with us tonight? I'm going bowling with him tonight. Tonight? Oh, I'm going to that end men screening. <clears throat> Probably don't know what that is, but yeah. do you take photos with people? Yeah, but like no one knows who I am. No one really asks. But I mean, if someone's like videoing for Instagram and you're like, they're like, "Hey, man!" Like, do you are you like a vampire, a garlic? Like, I had to put that thing on me. No, I just like, think it's easier just to do it and get it over with and, right. and move on than to like, you know, say no and have everyone call but you. But being a out of it and seeing us uh, egotistical idiots that are stuck in it, trying like videoing you so that we can post it. Do you ever go, man? Like. When are they going to wake up? Like, does it, does it, do we look stupid to you? Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. Because yeah, I know it. I know what I'm doing, you know? I know what I am. Yeah, but yeah, but to, to have like. It's the modern day autograph, right? Like, you mean like a celebrity, you would see a celebrity. Like getting a selfie. Me, Can I get a. Yeah, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, like the sure. modern days, you know. Where like I don't think you in your fifties would go get an autograph of you know a fighter or someone that you look up to, but you will go take a selfie. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. But but like if you being inside the bubble, if I got a clip of Heath doing a couple tricks, it's like I caught a unicorn. I know you don't think anything like that, but I'm just telling you from this perspective, it's a big deal. Which is cool. Not to him. <laughs> yeah, not to him. I know. <laughs> which, which makes it cooler. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Man. <laughs> seems like a lot. Seems what like seems a like lot? a lot? What do you mean? The social media world? Not being on it. Oh. But it's not, there's no benefit to him that. Like, like right? Like, yeah. I understand you're on it, and I understand, you know, you guys are, you know, have a product to sell or something, or like, you know, this is kind of gains momentum to where. It, it results in we, money. We want, we it results in money in your pocket. We want people if I to watch was on this social show. media, there wouldn't be another dime in my pocket. I did a five forty the other day. I didn't post it for money. I posted it because I was like, "Look at me." Well, I say it. It, it all helps your yes. You that that is a uh, mean, okay. Yeah. You got me. But do you believe me when I say that I didn't yeah, do it for money? Yeah, I don't think you're putting it on there going, "Oh, maybe I'll make five more dollars." Right. Month. No, I don't think you're doing that. I think you're you're posting it. So that your friends will see what you're up to, and then yeah. like they say that was fucking awesome, and you go like, yeah, yeah, that I was love awesome. pats on the back. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, who doesn't? I don't you, think you. Yeah, do. I don't think either. <laughs> I, don't, I don't in this setting. I think I'm talking to the guy right now. I don't in this setting. <laughs> I've never felt more inferior in my entire life. I'm like, god damn, you're such a dickhead, Jason. You don't get anything. <laughs> Next time I go, <laughs> next time I put and point my phone at my face, I don't know if I'm going to continue the video. Hey, everybody! Ah, oh, shut the fuck up, Jason. <laughs> Idiot. Because <laughs> I'm not making any money. Uh, That's the saddest thing about it. Hey, everybody! I'm broke. Like, what are you doing on there? Hey, I'm going to come off like an asshole on here, huh? No, <laughs> not at is, all. No, like, you're you not. Are, no, it's amazing. You know, if somebody thinks this is that, amazing, will somebody think that? But yes. I, this is what this is how I know you too. So I, I, I'm just thankful that... I'm surprised you would ask me to be on this. I was surprised because I am going to be a bad guest. And it's... It's already been great. What are you talking about? Uh, 
It's so great. I, I've been on that side of the camera, and I say those same words. I know, like, when, you know, I've been on that side of the camera. I was just like, no, you did great. He has no idea. No, no. It's awesome. We live in the bubble, Heath. We know. We, we know what's, what's okay. good, what's going to resonate. This will resonate, especially you digging up all these stories and trying to get me to name names. <laughs> I do have a Jason Ellis story. I don't know oh. if you'll remember this one. Yes, please. Do you ever remember me at all in Europe or anything? No. Okay. So we're on top of a van, and we're drunk. And, in, and we're in, like, Germany or something, those, like, monster contests and all this. You're acting like you don't want me to tell this story. Well, no, it's going to be bad. But it's not ahead. bad. It's not bad. Um, and I have a shitty memory, but Ian, I think Ian Deacon is driving, and he's, he might be drunk or not. But we're on top of this van just holding on, and he's driving like Ian Deacon isn't, like, a man of caution, and he's driving, <laughs> and then at one point, you just start sliding off, and I'm up there, and I have a good grip, and I just grab, I put my hand on you, and you stop sliding, and you just look at me in the eye, and I just, and just like, <laughs> that's the end of the story. <laughs> like, you knew you were going off, and I grabbed you, and you just looked at me, didn't say anything, just like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you were going off. That's on brand, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my only Jason. You, actually, I think that's the only time I've been around Jason. I was on top of a van. <laughs> he drunk. saved his life. And then I don't know if I saved his life, but he would have fallen, flown off. Would have got worked, like yeah. really worked. Because you were just sliding, with just like, part, and like I think you were at that drunk where you're just kind of like, it's gonna happen. I'm going. Yeah. Like the sad part around. about that story is he probably went and got destroyed after that. Yeah, who knows something what else, else happened that night? But I did say thank you. No, it was just, it was a, just look. a look. But it, but it, you knew oh, I said I knew that. what the look was. <laughs> right. but I was like, yeah, you were going over. Right. Yeah, see, because you're uh, now I'm starting to remember you. We never. You're not a conversationalist, and I'm a loud mouth. And I always know my place when it comes to people like you. Like I, I think that's Steve Barra hated me because I didn't catch it the first couple times that I'm the most annoying person Steve Barra could ever meet. <laughs> <laughs> but you were all, you, like, we never talked and I never tried to talk because I was like, I can tell that he doesn't want to hear this crap. So I, it's sort of like when he, has, when he had little kids, I just, just stay out of the way, Jason. Like, you're not supposed to be around little kids. So I feel like you saving my life off that van, like, I could be like, dude, thank you so much. But then I know that that would make you know that I'm a kook. So I just, if I just go... Because that's how I feel like you would want to be yeah. talked to. And we're just hammered, and it's just kind of like, you know. Right. There was a connection and a, <laughs> and a communication that happened but in I, that second. Like, we didn't hang out, dude, but as a skateboarder, I've always respected you for your skateboarding efforts, and, and I feel like, you fucking, do you not believe me? Like, I'm serious, dude. Okay. I don't, fall, like, I, I don't know everybody. <laughs> I, I, don't know you, like, I hit my head just right, as much he, as you just, do. I don't remember everybody, but. I didn't have a helmet, and it was concrete. Oh, I don't chew. Wait, are you are you disrespecting my my unconscious head bangings? Well, I want to take the test. We'll see who has more brain damage. Uh, you know what? This Wait, interview, this interview is making me feel it's like you contest. might be winning. When you took the te when you took the test, did it come back that you had any damage? No, no, I didn't. No, they didn't. They didn't do it like that. I don't know what the brain scans for. Because I remember the, the I remember when I was in there and I got my brain scan. There was a, a little Spanish guy who was like, "No, nah, no, that's not mine. This is my brain scan." And I was like, "Wait, is he trying to lie to get another fight?" And this was like we were uh, not big name fighters. This was five hundred to fight, five hundred to win. Like, and this guy was less of a name than me. And I was like, "This is for sure what he's getting." And he's crying right now because the doctor's not going to let him fight. So. There must have been some kind of reading that he got that was, you shouldn't be fighting because there's something wrong with your brain. Mm -hmm. But I, I, mine passed. So it's pass fail. That was pass or fail, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. do you yeah. feel any cognitive impairment? Yeah, you do. I feel like when I try to think critically, like if you give me like some, I don't know, like a math problem or something, like my brain will sit there and focus on it. And before it would have been fine, and then now my brain just like wanders and doesn't want to. Concentrate and, and fixate and solve the problem. See, I think I already. That's scary. I had that as a kid, so now it's hard to detect. And I smoked pot my whole life. I only stopped like ten days ago, so the damage is done. And I think when I started skating and hitting, like when I got to a certain level, I, when I was like really good, every contest was either knocked out or broken something. That was like when I was at my best. There was three years there where I was like 
in I go to hospital like two or three times a year because in the really? contest I go for that what that if I land three tricks and I got speed then we're going for the mm-hmm. gusto on the fourth one and I always wanted to make a trick that I've never done in my ride which was the dumbest of techniques ever but I would get my bell rung a lot I'd wake up and my arm would be shattered and I'd be like oh my god and then it got to a point where I've been in hospital too much I was on painkillers too much and I got fear like the the I broke both my elbows and lacerated my kidneys and then I crashed again and rebroke them and lacerated my lung or liver I don't know but it was another another MRI another the green stuff and everyone checking my stomach and and the painkillers because it was 6 months in total of I felt like I was just on the couch for 6 months and I remember playing with my girlfriend video games and I she beat me in a supercross game and I threw the remote at the TV and broke the TV and I was like that's not you this is the painkillers and then and then I didn't want to go back to that so when I started skating again I was like if you go for that and you break that again and you hit your head again and then you go to hospital and then you get the painkillers and then you go on the couch like I'm scared of that which made me hesitate which made me less committed to those cuz my my thing was I'm not that good but if I if I commit I I could get away with some stuff and it was you know and I wanted to do big stuff so it either I was I made it or I got switched off. How many times have you hit your head? Countless? I've been knocked out over 30 times. Ooh. Yeah, I'm nowhere close to that. Oh, well then you're fine. Yeah. yeah. And your brain was fine? Okay. Yeah, I know. I know exactly what I knew yesterday. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you jumped uh speaking of, of big stuff, you jumped Bob's ramp. Yeah. Why? It just looks like a lot of fun. It is. Was it was it though? Like yeah. what you imagine? Oh yeah. It's th- th- thrilling. Right? What was it like when you were heading like towards the Like it literally the I, I, I want to know felt this like death. Like I was going to like, like, I, like going to it and like whatever. It was so long ago I can talk this way now. Like I literally felt like a gladiator going to it where I'm yeah. just like, I don't oh, know what's is. coming out. Like the first time you jump it, you're just like, I don't know what's happening. But like, Did your eyes get watery from the wind? No. Because that was, that was the thing for me. Like the first, for some reason, the first hit, my eyes needed to adjust. So when I'd go down towards the kicker, it'd make my eyes a little watery, and I'd be like, blink, 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 and then fly off. And I'm like, man, I really wish my eyes wouldn't do that as I fly off this guy. Yeah. But that's it was not just what you part want. of the part of the deal. My question about it is, uh, from almost anyone that does it is a veteran vert skater. Yeah. Right. There's been, I mean, there was definitely a few street skaters. Sheckler did it, and yeah, then, uh, Lizard did it before. Did Pat Sheard, Duffy do Sheckler. it? Pat Duffy did and it. And then he, he broke his leg on the quarter right. pipe. Okay, so that's, that's my question is, is, what is it like when you make it and you're heading towards the quarter pipe with that so much speed? So if Pat Duffy never did that, whatever he did, break his knee or something, leg or yeah. whatever. Well, he tried happened, to run out. He tried I would to run have tried to do a backside air and then been the Pat Duffy. Like, have you done a backside air on a normal vert ramp? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how but high? Like, I don't know, foot or two, three, I don't okay, know. Okay, so different game if you had to For hit that quarter sure, Not a vert skater, not great, especially at that time. Probably hadn't skated vert in like 10 years. But, you know, the just making the mega ramp, I would have been like, all right, like, yeah. just pull up, do like a little five foot one out of this 20 yeah. foot ramp. You don't really get that off. But, but Pat Duffy was just like, the Pat the Duffy story. And then Bob came and was just like, do not hit that quarter pipe. All right. And I was just like, I wasn't because of Pat Duffy, but that reaffirmed. Oh, so, so how do you, you just knee slide out at the bottom? Yeah, the I flat? jump off okay. right before the quarter pipe. Got it, yeah. Yeah, I think, well, Pat, obviously, because he's not used to and skating. And Pat Duffy vert. is a good vert skater, or was. I don't think that and he... You I don't guys think... both looked at me like, nah. <laughs> no, it's more, it's more than... <laughs> no cover, mate. The guy did a backside nose blunt on a vert it's ramp. Not, it, no, no, it's, it's different. It's A backside nose blunt on vert is, is not hard for Pat Duffy. A, a head high backside air is a, it's a different it's more thing. Like it's like a different animal entirely when it comes to so vert. So Pat stuff. sucks at vert. Okay. No, what I'm my my <laughs> point was Pat is an awesome skater and can skate vert. My, he doesn't know how to knee slide. That's insane. and that was his downfall. Right. Oh, I thought he pulled out way too far. And he then pulled just out too dropped. far, but I think he tried to run out. Oh, oh, God. that's what happened. That's that's what video? I came to understand. We've not, no one's seen the footage. Yeah, I never saw it. I don't want to. Me neither. I think I. I think I that's like why I we don't know it, what happened. I don't know. Pat hit us back, watch but we, we love Pat. Pat's is still like, ripping, he was by the pioneer. way. Yeah. I mean, it, you, that was one of the first things that you and I talked about. Was Pat was Duffy. Pat Duffy and questionable, yeah. 
Like when we first met, it's like that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. <laughs> I feel like that's what we connected on. And that's where we started. And we came full circle, right? How yeah. was it, Heath? Was it too scary being here? Is it better now? It, well, yeah, where are we done? We, 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 <laughs> we, we, did our, we did our time. Okay, yeah, no. Unless there's anything else you want to dig mean, up uh, and embarrass me with. No, there's definitely like shit. That wasn't embarrassing, was it? No, I don't know. Can I say thank you for I saving my to, life? I didn't mean to compare like head hitting with you, Jason. You're, no, I think, I think you've taken more, more, I don't, more punishment than I am. I'm concerned for both of us. I am. I don't like. I worry a little bit about it. I worry about you too. Like it's not cool, yeah. you know. But I also respect you for putting in the work, because. Well, we didn't know what hitting the head was. Right. Know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. It wasn't until like the football players and the CTE started yeah, coming right. out where you started to be like. And stuff. Yeah, like, right. oh, that's me. Yeah, I, yeah, right. I'm there. Because like yeah. hitting my head was never that bad. Because yeah. it was Nobody just like, I wake about... up and it's just like a headache or like the next day. Yep. Or, but then you're fine. Nobody like, would... You roll an ankle and you're out for like a month or two. Right. You're like, that's bad. I remember the first time I ever went, I got knocked out and I, like a real good one, uh, in and out of consciousness and the ambulance to the hospital. And I, I woke up and a nurse was wiping my balls with a warm, wet towel because I peed my pants and I, I didn't realize. And uh, the doctor goes, um, you know, you've had a serious concussion. If you hit your head again this year, you know, you could die. And I was like, what? What are you t Why? Why would that make any... What do you mean? And he's like, just you don't please try not to do anything dangerous for like a year. And then I went to Mexico City and was in that mega ramp contest. And I remember like every time I went down the roll in, I heard that doctor say that. And I was like, it really... It was the last time I went to a mega ramp contest. Like, it freaked me out. Yeah. Did you ever go to, to, to the hospital? Not for hitting my head. No. I, I, I imagine not. There was one There was slam. no concussion go to the hospital, right? No, you no, no. Did when that. You wo if you woke up, you were okay. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the protocol. When I was a kid was, uh, oh, just have your dad wake you up every, or have your parents wake oh, you yeah, up every couple hours. Oh, yeah, don't go to sleep hours. for a while, yeah. yeah. Ha yeah. Have your parents wake you up every couple hours when you go to sleep, which is obviously not the protocol. No, but yeah. Now there's commercials on TV that say when you hit your head, like, go to the doctor. Yeah. I see this on TV now. There was one, I don't think you got KO, but this, this one fall, it's seared into my brain because we used it in the Bread House video, and I still think it's so gnarly. Yeah. You, you did a, like a late shove it down a little, uh, yeah. a little loading dock gap, and then and we fell forward one. and went right into a brick wall, like, yeah, at yeah. first. That was part of my Sponsor Me video, I think. Yes. Yeah. And you just see him, like, and then he just is crumpled, and he just starts tapping his foot on the <laughs> wall, just sort of to yeah. redirect all the pain and the trauma. Yeah. It still sits with me. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah. You are okay. I feel like my body's good. Yeah. Aside from you look great, man. You do look neck, good. The neck. That's a skater thing, right? Everyone's that's, got the neck thing. That's me. Yep. You yeah. don't have it, Jason? Sweet. Uh, I'm lying, that hurt. No, I get Do you? Do people <laughs> ask you, like, is something wrong with your neck? How? No. Because when people at, say my name or I'll turn, they're like, something wrong with your neck? I'm like, yeah. It doesn't go far enough. But. I was the first. Yeah, I was like, eh, what? <laughs> I was one of the first ones to like, uh, hey, Tony. And, and he goes, and I'm like, is your neck bad? And he's like, yeah, dude, surfing and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like. <laughs> That's, it's from skating. Yeah, you, it's you, from you said whiplash. you couldn't duck dive. Any, or you couldn't, when you, you said. No, you, when, I, well, when I surf, if I'm out in the water for a long time, from looking up, right. looking up at the waves, like from, from being on the board and paddling, looking up, my neck is jacked. Like uh, yeah. destroyed, yeah. Like it hurts for days after that. That's why I never became a big wave surfer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, Heath, we appreciate you stopping by and, and uh, overcoming your fear of interviews. Thank you. It's never going to do it again. <laughs> nah, well, I won't have to, I don't think. Good point. You said it all. That's what Howard says. Uh, yeah. No, but thanks for all your years of skating. Truly, thank you for, for your efforts. And um, we do have, I know you hate it, or I know you deny it, but we have great reverence for your skating and yeah. what, you, what you left behind and what you left out there. Oh, thank you. What you accomplished, and it's... Awesome. I mean, you are you are one of the greatest skateboarders. Well, pioneer. Torturing so him. You. You're torturing him. I know. That's it. Now Heath can can go be comfortable elsewhere. You're free, dude. <laughs> All right. If I can right. describe. Thank you. <laughs>